This next one might involve something that is a little bit new to some of you, but it's pretty simple. And that's the idea of the elastic potential energy. Very similar to your gravitational potential energy. If you lift something up and you let it go, you get that energy back. Similarly, if you push something up against a spring and you let it go, you get the energy back. With all these similarities, we can likewise define a potential energy for the force and the work done by the spring. So in that sense, your spring force is also treated as a conservative force because we're able to define a potential energy for it. The expression for the potential energy, provided that your spring force is defined by Hooke's law, the simple O linear spring, then your potential energy elastic is going to be defined by one half k delta x squared where delta x of course is zero when the spring is under form. The expression looks a little bit more complicated than your mgh because the spring force isn't constant. As you squeeze it more the force increases so that's where the square comes in. But like any energy question let's start by doing a before and after picture. So before there's a bow, and you've pulled the arrow all the way back. And then afterwards, you let it go. Arrow is traveling fast. And that the quote unquote spring in the bowstring is completely relaxed again. So when you keep track of things, we want to keep track of your speed, which is zero to begin with, and some unknown speed that we're trying to find out, right? Speed of the arrow immediately after. You can track your height. But during this release, it happened probably usually quite quickly that we can say that the height hasn't changed. But additionally, we have to track this delta x for my potential energy elastic term. What we're told is that it's fully relaxed at the end and it got scrunched up by 50 centimeters or 0.5 meters. The in between, we're tracking just the forces on the arrow. So you have the spring force pushing you forward, and then you have your gravity pulling it downwards. But you can argue that, that the timing is so short that the arrow doesn't have very much time to drop any at all. Technically, you might have a little bit of a drag force as the arrow speeds up, but arrow being arrow, quite aerodynamic, and the time is quite short. We're going to also argue that the drag force is basically insignificant. Writing out your energy balance. Now we have the added complication that your potential energy is comprised of two terms. You have your gravitational mgh and you have your elastic potential as well. K being the spring constant of course. The total amount of non-conservative work, well there's no non-conservative forces because both the spring and the gravitational forces their work is tracked by your potential energies. None of that. Then we have one half m v two square plus the same thing. Which a bunch of those become zero, so that's zero. Your height beginning and after is also zero. Your final delta x is also zero. And so it becomes fairly straightforward to find out this um v2 here. Except that we don't have k yet. k is pretty easy to find out because we know from Hooke's law. And the negative we can drop for now because that just gives us the right direction. We know that the force is 150 newtons times k times your half a meter of displacement. So k is 300 newtons per meter. So then we can sub that right in. So to solve for your v2, let's cancel out the one half. Converting the kilograms, make sure our units work out right. This gives us the speed of the arrow is 39 meters per second. So hopefully not too complicated, just the added new term in your potential energy, which has the spring force, or what we call elastic potential energy.